This is an interview with my buddy Edmund. So he is from the UK. Um, I'm Hello, here. everyone. Hello. Introduce yourself, quick, buddy. Hello, everyone. My name is Edmund Edge, and I live in Surrey, which is in the UK, about an hour west from London. I met Matthew in Miami in February. We both work in fitness and became friends, sort of thing, and now we're doing our first interview together. Awesome. So, like you said, I'm over here in Miami. Came over here to learn from some mentors and finished my undergrad studies over here. So I've been here ever since. It's a lot different over here. It's it's really really hot. So it's in the 91s. Yeah, and Seattle. <laughs> yeah, compared to where I was in Seattle, it's quite a big difference. What's the weather like over there? Weather here actually this time of the year is actually half decent. It's been about sort of between 15, 25 degrees. It's like 68. 70, 75 Fahrenheit, approximately. So for this time of year, it's actually been really nice, which has really helped everyone being stuck inside currently with the epidemic. Isn't that crazy? So if y'all are listening and hearing that, so with everything kind of coming around, it's kind of great to see that even across the world that like everything's kind of warming up. And, you know, over here, it's really, it's too hot to go outside, but where he's at, it's at least, <laughs> it started to actually kind of get to that point, you know. What's your background? So, like, kind of tell a little bit about yourself. Yeah, cool. So, I started doing fitness. So, I, I was, I still am really into my cricket now, which is the UK's national summer sport here. So, when I was 16, I, got, I started to get, like, really quite good, like, taking it really seriously. I got into my, like, county team and like, an academy sort of thing. And fitness was a real big thing. My fitness was not that good. I still remember doing my like bleep test, my first ever bleep test. I was out like second. And I was like, Ugh. but although I was like, oh, that's not very good. I really enjoyed it. And then I went and stuck and got better, better at it. Went out to Australia and went to an academy out in Australia in Perth, which was great fun for six months before university. That was a lot of fun. Again, fitness is a big emphasis. And I, I got again. It's funny how luck plays a part in life. Like. My best friend out there in Australia was a real big gym enthusiast, was a personal trainer already, and sort of showed me how physical cricket is. It appears a lot of standing around is, but it's actually a very physical game. If you want to bowl a ball at 90 mile an hour or hit the ball for six, like which is like 80 metres or 75 metres at least, it's a long way. So technique helps, but power also helps as well. Then went to university, did my degree in English language and psychology. And that's where my like, love of like people came from. Then left university and I got to coach a coaching sport because I was like, well, I like people. I like look at the human psyche. I like sport. So I combined the two together, started coaching sport. But I found the good kids were great, but the not so good kids or the ones who knew it all or thought they knew it all, who were who over it themselves, <laughs> were just a pain in the bum basically <laughs> and I was like well I, I love what else do I like I, I, I love fitness I love coaching I love putting myself in some of his shoes and helping them improve it's funny how you, you have mentors teaching you and you become a mentor yourself so I love fitness love training myself in the gym so I become a personal trainer and I have like more control over which people I can coach essentially and it's been really good fun so far I've been doing about a year now yeah, to my course of Premier Global, who are owned by NASM, so which is an American company. That's awesome. So anybody, anybody that's unfamiliar, cricket is the one with the really flat bat. So yes, it's correct. not like you saw it the right. It's the one with the flat bat. Yeah. Um, it's it's an interesting sport. It's it's similar to like baseball, right? But the way that it's thrown, there's wickets in the background, correct. which. If anybody's ever seen cricket, go watch it. It's actually a very interesting sport. It can be very long, though. Is that is that right? Correct. Well, there, there's three versions of it now. So, for so for when England play, like England play like Australia, South Africa, India, etc., you can play a match which like called a Test, which is like five days of cricket. They're, that, they're actually the best games those are. They're actually really good. And they've got one day matches, which is just one day. They'll have 20 over games, which is 20 over, and those are three hours. So they're actually a really good idea to take a girl to, the three hour ones, if she dies, when you go, when you go like, when you're dating. And like, she, normally they're best, the best pairs when they get like, chips interval, though. Um, that's the highlight. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's three points of cricket. As the world has sped up, 
the cricket has changed to the the game has become faster as well. The original game that we first had still stands, but we've created new formats to sort of entertain younger generations, and they're all great fun to play. So oh, that's awesome. I know my stepfather; he actually played in India, so he played a lot of cricket growing up. We got to nice. play that. So interesting. And then you played there, and then. You, you transition to the personal training, and I know with everything kind of going on, it's a little bit wild, right? Our industry is kind of in this weird little funk, right? We're in a – every gym's closed. Everything's kind yeah. of just a little bit different. Like, how is that – how is that being impacted where you're from or where you're living right now? So not living too far from London. I know some of my friends in London are just, like, freaking out. <laughs> like, they're like, I, I want to break into my gym or I throw a brick through the window. I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, so, so some of them are just like, the gym was their place of relaxation. It's where they got out some testosterone, it's where they also in, enjoyed themselves and did their physical work sort of thing. So some of them have ordered gym equipment from Amazon, which has been very slow to deliver. The ones who I've been able to convert to body weight training, hit training, or just going for a run, they're okay because they're doing that. But there's some people who are like, I love my weights. I lived away for like 10 years, I'm not going back. I'm like, well, just try and do something new. And that, that's a key point. With clients, all I really ask for with a client is someone who's a good listener, someone who's willing to learn, and someone who tries their best. That's all you want. Someone who's like receptive to new ideas, uh, tries their best, and yet, yeah, and sort of doesn't complain too much, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. They have to be kind of coachable, right? Like, they have to have yes. like that willingness in them. And reasonably intelligent or people who are curious about it which partly comes from yourself as a trainer like if you're passionate about it your enthusiasm will rub off onto them yeah i i honestly couldn't agree more you know with all the people that i've had you know the fortune of uh working with i think the ones that have been the most pleasant and the ones that have really changed my life right it's not like sometimes we get more out of it than they get out of us and sometimes yeah. just working with that really like really positive person or somebody who's like really stoked on learning what you're teaching down and they really, really are engaged with what you're doing, those end up being the best. And you honestly a lot of the times we work with such a diverse amount of people that you're learning all kinds of crazy stuff. Like just you know, like if you're working with somebody who's like a finance guy, you might learn something. If you're learning working with someone who's a teacher, you might learn yeah, something. Yeah somebody who's like an HR, I don't know, just like name it. There's, there's somebody that, you know, that you can always learn from. And yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. with the people that we work with, you know, I know that with everything going on right now and just the pandemic and whatnot, it's a little bit different, right? But the principles of staying active, maximizing your resources, trying to find something to stay active, stay healthy. You know, I know you mentioned like, going into body weight, maybe training training a little bit differently. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. What what worked with you? What have you seen like as far as trends, whether on Instagram or anything? Like what have you switched to yourself? Like how have you been able to like how have you been able to have fun while you're doing that too? So I really I, I'm so as I said, I love cricket. I love also I also do lots of karate. So they're sports which involve moving yourself a lot rather than also you have a bat and a ball, rather than lifting an external weight from yourself. So I'm quite used to moving myself and my body quite a lot by myself. So, you know, and ever since Dick, because I go you know, about that cricket stuff, when I was like 16, it was all body weight. When we were in the county team, the academy, so over here we call uh, state counties. So we have like Surrey, Berkshire, Manchester is in Lancashire, for example. Liverpool is up there as well. That's in... Um, I think Worcestershire. Actually, you know, I might have to Google that one. So per personally, it's not been a problem because I, I, I love doing HIIT workouts, I've done body weight workouts. So for me, fine. For people, like I noticed Beachbody, who specialize in home workouts, they've had real demand in workouts. People who do, lots, lots of my friends are doing HIIT workouts on Instagram Live, and that's going pretty well. So for people who, are, who like that already, great. People who are a little bit, should we say, fix their mindset that it must be weights. I always say, what's the difference between doing, you can, you, 
they're, they're one of their big heavy weights. Well, what's the difference between lifting, doing six to eight reps, or say, I don't know, 60 kilograms, or you could go do 40 push-ups? The, ch the chest is a big muscle. If you go and lift that 40 times, that's a lot of reps. It's not quite as sexy or as visible to people, so you don't get the physical validation that you're doing anything hard work, but the end result is the same. No, I, I like that. Like, for those, I like to do a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. So, like, I feel like I am very much in love with the weights. You know, I... Yeah, yeah I, I like I weights like, too. Right, we all, I think as a trainer, you kind of, you kind of have this, like, ability to kind of use any tools that you have, right? It's kind of fun to be able to, like, you know, when I was powerlifting, was a lot of big, the big three, like, bench press, squat, deadlift. Yeah, yeah. I had a lot of fun. You know, I got to travel to all kinds of competitions, meet a bunch of people, you know, it was an incredible experience while I was doing that. And then, you know, I kind of had some injuries along the way, but besides that, you know, it's great if you do it right. And then for like bodybuilding, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed, you know, the aesthetic appeal and all that. But once again, I was kind of like, at some point I got a little bored with bodybuilding mm -hmm. and switching into like movement training. It when you say just, you got bored, was that due to the, diminishing returns no so like for me personally when i started bodybuilding originally it was like to get into competitions and then i did one competition when i was like super young you know it, for me just working shoulders doing overhead pressing you know especially when i didn't know better i was mm -hmm. doing like front delt raises side delt rear delt raises that, that, that's a great crazy. that's a great point education is so important like throughout like my early 20s i tried my best with the information i had but it never quite got me the results I wanted because it was to an extent, you know, I've been taught, I've been in cricket academy sort of thing, but very good trainers, but it was like, do this. And everybody said, why? Now that I'm a personal trainer, I know exactly why they told me to do it, but also how to split a session and how to train yourself. Before it used to be like, guess what? I tried all different work, ways trying to get fit and strong and get the physique I wanted. Like I used to go, used to go like running for an hour every day I to go to the gym for an hour again doing everything I've been taught but never quite getting the result I wanted and my cricket and my performances they improved but never to what I quite wanted to because in a sense it was guesswork that's crazy like um for anybody who might be listening like if you can ever relate to like when you first start out especially when you first started you just kind of find like an article or for me like Lately, I've been going on uh, YouTube, right? And I'll just look up hit workouts. And I'm like, okay, what can I do for like 30 minutes? What can mm -hmm. I bust out? And then me being really picky, I'm like, I'll get like 10 minutes and I'm like, no, can't do this. And then I'll, I'll try to nitpick what I like. And then I'll find movements that are complementary to like my style of training. But mm -hmm. then at the same time, taking this time, I've also been able to adapt what I normally would do, right? For me, I like all kinds of stuff, whether it's sandbag, kettlebells, really big into kettlebells, barbells, dumbbells, mm -hmm. and going into like different body weight styles. You know, the other day I had like, I think like 40 different push-up variations because I was like yeah, nerding yeah. out. <laughs> like, it's been great to be creative with the workouts, you know, using like Tabata, you know, which is 20 seconds. Yeah, Tabata's of, good, yeah, yeah. Of active work, really high intensity, all out. 10 seconds of rest, and then you can either cycle through movements or you can do the same movement throughout that. So playing with those styles that I haven't done, you know, since I was, like, conditioning for, like, wrestling or, like, jiu-jitsu back in the day, you know, those kind of competitions. And being able to switch has been a lot of fun. You know, I'm sweating bullets because I'm used to, like, heavy, low, you know, high weight, mm -hmm. like, rep strength work. And then, I'm, you know, I started going on runs and I'm just dying, especially out here in the Miami Heat. <laughs> like... What, I mean, that's what it, stuff that's have it. you been able to do? The point is, during this period, as long as you're doing something, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're, even if it's just like a walk, <laughs> even if it's like a decently paced walk, that's better than nothing. Or even if you just, I don't know if you live in a flat or you live in a house, but even if you go up, up and down the stairs a bunch of times, for the quick, that's better than nothing. As long as you're doing something, ideally getting the heart rate a little bit excited, <laughs> that's the key, right? Obviously, it, it's difficult if you are lifting lots of heavy weights in the gym. It's obviously diff difficult to replicate. But like I said, your body is a big weight. Whether you weigh 50, 70, 90 kilograms, etc., it's a lot you're lifting. So 
to an extent, you can try and be creative. Be careful at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but YouTube's great. There's so many good workouts on there. So many good trainers. It's it's been awesome. You know, like for for anybody like that's curious, is like it's not necessarily. There's a lot of information out there. I think the biggest thing that like even as trainers that we have gained as a skill set was learning what to screen for and what is like not only pragmatic, like what's something that we can actually do, but like something that's fun, something that we enjoy, but also something that is going to yes. kind of drive towards the goal in mind, right? If it's to get active, well, a walk works. Like what, what kind of stuff would you have your clients do? Like let's say in this situation, right? We're in COVID, you know, we're all in lockdown. Our clients may not have that gym resource that, you know, we all love so much. Yeah. You know, Everybody's getting a little cranky. Yeah. What kind of stuff would you recommend? Like, to, let's say your client's at home or somebody listening is at home. What are some stuff that, like, that Great you've point. seen or that you've done? I'm not sure if it's from, from my enthusiasm, but I always get my clients a lot to hit training because I really enjoy it. So normally what I'll do with my clients, we'll do our weight stuff. They'll do hit, hit at the end, right? For our cardio, we'll do hit training at the end. So because of that, with my clients I have, we'd still do that. or We are still doing that. For people who don't like that, you made a good stuff. Look into things like Tabata power workouts and Tabata strength workouts, which are lifting your body, mixing a little bit of cardio as well. But they're, as the name suggests, power and strength, they're not so cardio based. So, before you said about making it fun, a big key with fitness and anything, particularly, I have a lot of. So I, I quite I, I like school, I like university. So I've got like quite a lot of like nerdy friends, should we say, who are not that active. I always think about I have tried to encourage them to, to do and train with me, like just on Zoom coaching or Skype coaching. They're not that active. And as they're my friends, I'm like, well, I'd like if you were more active. A big thing with it is number one, is it like rewarding the fitness? And by that are they enjoying it? Because a lot of people are unfit. They don't go to the gym because it'll be humiliating. That's a big one. Like they go there and this is actually an ideal way to start. If you're not that fit, go for a walk, go for a light jog. You can build up when the gym's reopen. You can go back and be slimmer, go to the running machine. It won't be embarrassing at all, but it must give some sort of, some degree of satisfaction and reward and performance. It also must teach them a little bit as well. But a lot of people are scared of the gym from being judged. That's why a lot of people don't don't go. And this is why it's an ideal time really to start walking or jogging or just doing like press ups every day and get some strength in there. And then when the gym reopen, you'll be like, I've lost, I don't know, maybe half a stone, a stone, whatever, or five kilograms if we're talking kgs. You, you use pounds, don't you? Or LPS, yeah. Don't you? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just getting thrown off by that. You're not the only ones. Like when he says stones, I'm also like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> so in Australia, in Australia, they use kilograms. Here we use stone. You guys use pounds. So <laughs> darn settlers, we had to be different. I think it's about thirty pounds to ten kilograms of one stone. I think I'm not sure exactly, but you can you guys can Google it. Let us know. Yeah, we'll we'll try to put a little converter in there. I'll put a little link. See what we can find <laughs> on Google. But. I think it's awesome. And then also just a small variation. You guys say press ups, we say push ups, right? Right. <laughs> so that's that and in your British accent, so it's it's always interesting to hear like different perspectives and stuff. Like I really like this stuff, especially you kind of taking like your psychology background and being able to see not only into a client what is gonna create something that is achieving their goal, but also creating something that's going to be sustainable and keep them consistent. Yeah. I think a lot of the times we should, there's a difference between exercising and training. Training usually has an objective. You can create a goal, you can create a plan of action, right? Something that you can work towards mm -hmm. with exercising. It's typically just to stay active, to move and both yeah. have their merits and both are great. And as long as you're being healthy and active and, achieving some level of a holistic lifestyle. I think it's just great that you're doing something. But one of the things that I've noticed with certain people is that 
if the client, let's say, is a newbie, right, and they're a little bit humiliated, sometimes starting off with exercise, so-called, and then moving to training, so-called, and having them start off with that consistent basis sets them on a longer-term path where they were, are more inclined to do that, right? So, like, if someone is, let's say they're first starting out their journey, right, Losing weight, the, the easiest way for anyone, you know, if you need something like tangible, start walking, light jog, and then reduce the amount of calories you're intaking. Like that's yeah. the basis. Start moving, reduce a little bit of what you're eating, right? And yeah. I think a lot of people are being really sedentary. A lot of people are scared, right? And I really love what you said about like IG Live, Zoom, Skype calls, stuff like that. Yeah. Have you seen that as something um, of a trend throughout, like, even where you're at? Yes, absolutely. So, some of my personal training friends who live in, up in London, they, they've been doing it, which is great because what, while people start at home, it's great that people are offering this service. And they get, I mean, it's important time for people with their mental health to get a sweat on, also to keep moving. And I, I find I pretty much exercise every day here at home while, or at home. I might have a day off, just the muscles are rest sort of thing. But I do it most days, and if I don't, I feel like I've not really worked that hard sometimes. And that's mainly why I still train, because you want to go to bed feeling, yeah, I gave my all today at a few things, whether it's look like working on like business or fitness or even just like researching a new topic. You want to have that feeling when you went to bed, yeah, I was sort of productive today and not just like watching Netflix all the time. <laughs> an, ep an episode is okay a small binge but move <laughs> that there's yeah, a lot yeah. there. uh, you, you made some, and... <laughs> yeah yeah you made some great points that or oh, even about netflix i always said why don't you put your exercise bike if you've got an exercise bike or row machine put it by your tv yeah absolutely. Like, um like one of my ones like i have so many clients who need to use a phone roller regularly i always say well when you're watching tv just do it then and when people say, I don't have time, you do have time. <laughs> you, 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 when you're watching TV in the, in the evening for an hour or so, you just have like a firm roll as muscles for like 10 minutes, then it's done. And, and in fact, that's a key point. This time with the pandemic, you get some people who make excuses with, I can't gym because there wasn't time. Now, some people are now gymming or doing home exercise and some aren't. So the ones who aren't, you know before they were bluffing. That was their excuse beforehand. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's always something that I think is quite entertaining of an idea is the idea that, like, it has to be, like, an hour-long workout when in reality, like, you can, let's say you did, like, 50 squats, like, a few push-ups, maybe, like, a plank. Oh, and well, that was, that, uh, was that press-ups? Sorry. Um... Yeah, press-ups. So, like, <laughs> if you're on that side of the world, you could do, like, a certain amount of press-ups, right? One style is, you know, I, I love the Tabata power or like something along that lines, right? One way that's really good for any, I'll, I'll try to attach some research on this, time under tension or the amount of volume involved in something, right? Mm -hmm. You want to have this idea of super compensation, which is basically like you have where you're at right now, you push a little bit past it and your body has like, it's stimulated, right? So now, like, these muscles are, like, a little bit damaged, and then they can heal if you're eating correctly. Yeah. And they're going to get – they're stressed, they recover, and then you get the result or the outcome of what you're going for. You know, with one style that, you know, like, I've I've been playing with is I have this – I don't really have um, a pull-up bar or anything. So I've been resourceful, and I've been going around my house, and I scouted this little area where there's – it's uh, a parking garage. And there's this bar, right? So I've been able to do like inverted rows, which is basically where like you're underneath the bar and you row yourself up to the bar. Yeah. Nice. Um, I'll do that for 30 seconds. I have a little Tabata timer on my phone. And then I'll do 30 seconds, 10 seconds rest, right? I'll choose three exercises. One is typically I'll do like um, squat jumps. This is an example. Exercise A. I'll say 10 second break. Exercise B is push-ups, right? So for that 30 seconds, I'm doing as many as I can. Yeah. I'm creating as much stress in the chest, the shoulders, the triceps, yeah. um, the core, because 
you know, a push up is basically moving plank, right? If you're doing yes, it right, yes, correct, correct. and um, I'll do that for 30 seconds, right? And then I'll put another 10 seconds of rest. I'll go underneath the bar. I'll do inverted rows, right? I can do an isometric, which is just holding it, right? Holding at the top, squeezing my shoulder blades together, um, creating contraction in the back, the lat muscles, or I'll just do a bunch of reps, you know, like if I want to get my heart rate up. And I'll cycle through that, you know, like for five minutes, right? And by that time of that five minute, that five minutes is up, I've done a good amount of, considering volume, I've done a good amount of like rowing motions or back exercises, chest exercises, as well as something to work my legs. I'm like piss and sweat. Um, I feel good. My heart rate's up. <laughs> but that, yeah. that, that's good. That's how it should be. I, I, I don't like it. So a few points to come back to for things you said. When, when someone leaves the gym and they're like bone dry, particularly, no offense, some pretty girls with their makeup on. <laughs> like some people like, leave the gym, they're like bone dry. I'm like, did you even try anything? I mean, everyone sweats different amounts. But after a workout, I'm sweating buckets. I'm out of breath. As a mentor once told me, if you're not sweating buckets, gasping of breath, you didn't work hard enough. And mm. that's, a, that's a big one. I find I really enjoy teaching classes, but one of my biggest like pet peeves is when people talk. Because I, I, I as a trainer, I want you to get your fitness goals. I want them for, for yourself, your mind, and your body, and get you the result you want. If you're chatting, you're not working as hard as you can do, and you won't get what you want. You, you came here for a reason, and if that was a chat, go for a walk for a friend. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to chat, go for a jog, and chat then. Then you can do. But when you come to my session, I want you to be serious, essentially, and take it seriously. In the breaks, at the end, at the start, fine, talk if you want to. But when we hit the gym, we hit the gym. Um, it's and, time. And that, that's a key principle with how to, how seriously do you want it, sort of thing. A, a few points going to what you said. It's it's really interesting. You mentioned before about people in the gym it's fascinating when you have someone who's brand new in the gym like we said we talk about newbies we use that word as well newbies here sometimes someone will come to the gym and you think this person's like really shy like what's up and they'll tell you this is my first, first time in the gym for like 20 years You're like, oh i get it now <laughs> and, yeah. and um you're gonna say it's quite a daunting prospect and essentially just with them it's just starting off the habit getting the habit of enjoying the gym and, and you're just going and getting small awards. It should be, as I said, it should be fun, rewarding, and interesting because then you'll come back again. Um, a great point I remember flashing back. So I'm, I'm now a first down black belt in Shotokan karate. I've been doing it for four and a half years now. In about a year and a half, I can go for my second down. My point being, I remember when I was red belt. So you start off in white, then you get blue, then you get red. So I was working towards orange. There are 12 belts in all to get to black belt. So you get, you do a grade like every three or four months. Then next grade, next grade, next grade. I remember I was, I was red belt. So I've been doing it for, I don't know, probably six months karate. And there was one lesson I messed up basically. I wasn't really, I, I was trying, but not really concentrating. And after this session finished, I got sort of, I didn't, I didn't get told off. I got feedback from a teacher, oh, you're this and this wrong. I remember like walking home, I was in a, a bit of a huff, like, oh. But then I thought, <laughs> then I thought, well, I can either moan and complain, or I can go home and practice, you know, and sort it out. I went home and practiced all week, and next week I got student of the week. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. But the point being, I could have either like felt sorry for myself and sulked and not gone back again, or I was like, well, actually, it's nothing that I, it's. I was applying myself quite enough and you can't just expect to coast through the belts and it always be oh, oh, this is all easy hunky dory and i never and that i think that's like a, a turning point with being my martial arts career as it were if i have not done it done that practice i could have given up and never go back again but i didn't do that put in that extra time went back and ever and never never ever thought about quitting ever again since yeah um so like you did karate you got your black belt for me, I did wrestling. So, like, collegiate wrestling is called folk style when it's within the world scope. And one of the – and I did freestyle as well, competed in that. And one of the things that, like, I love so much about martial arts is you go through a series of fundamentals, mm -hmm. and then you learn as much as you come back. And then when you go up to that next level, let's say your black belt, 
typically it's like you learn a bunch of really cool stuff, but you're also re like sharpening the fundamentals, right? It's like you could go into a million things, but from the words of Bruce Lee, a kick is a kick and a punch is a punch. It's yeah. not necessarily what it is. It's how well you administrate it, right? So yeah. like yeah. for those who are like going into fitness and you're starting out and, you know, even in our own journeys, like, you know, you started off playing cricket, you had an interesting background as far as athletics. You know, I think a lot of trainers or strength coaches or physiotherapists, we all have, or any practitioner, a lot of times we have this athlete background or at least the fascination with movement or just moving, being active, you know, whether it's walking, hiking, biking, whatever. And it leads to this point where all the information that we learn, whether in academia or through research of like psychology, nutrition, it usually comes down to the basic things. And it's not how much you do, it's how well you do the simplest things. Like even now, like when I was going to compete, like I was going to get, get ready to compete again, right? And men's physique mm-hmm. and the gym's clothes. It didn't really become a priority at that point. You know, at this point, yeah. it's like, okay, let's stay healthy, let's stay active. I'll lose some gains. I'm okay with that. Let's just stay active and healthy. And it didn't change the fact that I need to watch what I'm putting in my body. It didn't change that I need to move my body. And it didn't change the fact that for my mental health, especially being inside a lot, you know, doing my business or reaching out to family members or just connecting with people that I care about. Yeah. Being useful also means being uh, healthy. I feel so, I feel so loved now. <laughs> right? Uh, you are. Much love. Um, Like, those basic things are so simple and so important in the foundation of how we view things, how we do things. Like, in your experience, you know, going from that white belt to the black belt, what what process did you see going from the fundamentals that allowed you to get to that point? That's a great point, actually. So the first year is quite repetitive. So you do white belt, red, orange, and yellow generally in the first year. And a lot, a lot of people give up after the first year because it's quite repetitive. You learn, so we call them catters. Catters are a series of movements of blocks and attacks. And you move to the left, move to the right, you move forwards, backwards to defend yourself essentially from any line of attack, basically. I mean, you know, as they say in karate, you know, hopefully never need this outside up here but you never know and, and j- j- i mean i always like the story if you're looking for trouble you'll find it and if you don't you probably won't so but yeah it's always good to be prepared so yeah the first year it's very sort of focused on getting the fundamentals right and it's only once you get to about green belt you start learning a new kata a lot of new stuff each belt because the first year is very like we're learning how to do solid blocks and solid attacks basically and then we'll get into more blocks more attacks but look at the fundamentals really really sharp first but a lot of people give up after the first year they do it for a year and then boom and and that's where you know like mental toughness comes into it but it's it's also it's a great question when something become a passion in life so i i would say for the first two and a half years i enjoyed karate when I was training for my black belt, so the, the first 10 belts, which took about, what, two and a half, three years, and the next two belts took six months, I had to start training more than just like, before, up to now, I could go once a week and practice at home and pass all my gradings fairly easily. I practice a lot. I practice like every day for at least two, four weeks, two, three, four weeks before the grading. I go once a week and I pass. After the 10th one, the last two before black, I had to go particularly for the black one, I had to go at least twice a week, and I was often going like three, four times a week. It got so fascinating, though, by doing it that much, because the amount of intricate little nuanced movements and insights I got into karate were fascinating. And, yeah, I said, the first two and a half, three years, I'd say I really enjoyed it. But only the last year it became a passion. So I stuck with it, and as I got better and better and better, I got more and more time with the coaches and better martial artists, and as a result, I got better. But also, the insights were fascinating, if that makes sense. So, if you, same with any skill, if you can get through the first phase, even even now, so recently I started a YouTube page, fitness, called uh, 
Edge's fitness secrets. And I, I was watching my video the other day. The amount I've learned from watching myself on camera, I'm like, oh, that they're, they're, they're doing a squat, they're doing, doing a push up. I mean, I was like, my squats, squats aren't bad, but they could be better. So, yeah. it, it, so actually, that's a really good one. Everyone's listening. If you're not at home right now and you're working out, record your workout and have a look how you look. You'll be surprised and you think, oh, actually, I could go to another 10% sort of thing. Yeah, they're, they're, that, they're that's like, a great exercise to do for a day to actually you know, self-critique yourself. Video feedback doesn't lie, sort of thing. Yeah. So, and that's also another thing with, with fitness, in particular, to become a personal trainer. An inch, I tell you, it makes a big difference in the human body. So, you know, the difference between a front squat and a back squat is not that different, but the effect it has on the muscles is, right? You're, you're targeting more the quads and the glutes in in various different ones, aren't you? So that's another thing with fitness. As I've been doing this personal training thing and researching that, again, the insights you get into it are personally fascinating. I guess you have to be reasonably open-minded and enjoy learning. But if you stick in there and listen to what people say, try things like with my karate and fitness, it's becomes better and better and better and more and more interesting. So that would say I say that is the key to learning a still skill. Stick in there. You, you'll probably know. I mean, again, you want exercise to be re fairly rewarding. But I remember the first time I went under karate, I really enjoyed it. I had that part when I was at that, was that when I was at that red belt. I've been doing it about six for about six months. When I could, it was fifty fifty. I could have given up, or I could go home and practice and do well. I chose to go home and practice, and I did well, and that's. So yeah, the longer you can stick in there, the better. About passion, enthusiasm how that rubs off onto your clients. And yeah, I have a lot of people that. come into the gym for inductions and they say this has been the be best induction I've ever had, which has been a nice compliment for me to receive, but they said this is by far the best gym induction I've ever had. You've been interesting, it's been fun, and I've learned some new things. Sometimes I've had inductions and it's like the person is like talking to like a brick wall. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I really like pump for the person. It's like you're at the start of your fitness journey in January, I was in a way really happy and also not happy, particularly with one of our gym chains here in Britain. So I was really happy. Lots of people joined the gym. I was also slightly unhappy because they're not sure what they're doing. If that makes sense. So there is a gym chain here in Britain, very successful one, brilliant gym, open, open all day, all night, but it's a very cheap membership. Okay. And people want to get fit for as cheap as they can. But that means for a lot of people, they're going to go run the treadmill for half an hour, do that three or four times a week, and six weeks later, they've lost a little bit of weight, not the result they've wanted, and they'll probably stop going. Not that they didn't try hard enough, that's a lack of information. That's, Does that make sense? I think that's so true. Like, with any expertise, like, when you... Like, this was a model that we had from a very similar mentor, where... When you're you're creating a system, like the main reason that like even you know as a as a youth athlete, when, when we have coaches, the number there's three things that they really usually provide. You know, SAS is usually creates not only a system that you abide by. You know, that would be our expertise in programming, creating a curriculum, things of like just things like that. It holds you accountable. Right, so they're getting the extra ten percent out of you, mm -hmm. and they're like, you know, whether it's the boot camp style like intensity of someone, or maybe it's, you know, not every coach is that intense. Some coaches are very nuanced and are able to encourage, right? And that's always what you want to be. You want to be a leader rather than a boss, and they're able to inspire that little bit of accountability and hold you to it because we're there to guide rather than to hold your hand, right? If you hold your, if, if you need someone to hold your hand along every step in every aspect of your life raft. Like, yeah. So with my clients, I always book them for like 12 sessions or, or aim to, because they, they can do about four, eight or 12, but I say four is a waste of time because we'll make a bit of progress then done. So I also try and do at least eight, probably 12, because then I can help you for a longer period. But I often say on the 11th session, do you want to plan the last session? You know, and I, I, I'll, I'll be here and I can help you, but do you want to try and plan it yourself? With the idea, I mean, we've had 12. We can add another 12 if you want to. But a bit like a driving instructor, a driving instructor teaches you, you learn, and then it's like, thanks very much, thanks for lessons, bye-bye. Yeah. And I, ideally, I would try and like to incorporate that into 
clients, ideally, how I, I teach them how long it takes. So it's 12 weeks, 24 weeks, how long it takes. But then one day it's like, yeah, I have the conference to go and just by myself. I, ideally, I, although you do get some clients who, it's funny, some clients just want a fitness result and some you get on really well with and they almost have a bit like a friend. <laughs> yeah. and, and no guys, it, it's nice having both, but the ones who want it, who are kind of like friendly with you, that, that's fine, it's nice because you often have similar vibe in life, similar topics of interest and so it's quite fun to chat to. But often the reason why they came is they aren't wanting to get fit, but also they also they also view as a friend as well. And it's why some some of my colleagues have had client, PT clients for years. It's part, and they know what to do. They've been trained by them for like years. As I said, it's more they like the companionship. Yeah, and that's that's the support, you know. So it's like mm. you get the system, you get the accountability, then you get the support of like yeah. someone that cares about you. It's you know whether it's in sport, like I know you you have ambitions to coaching sport specific or to coaching like elite athletes and things like that. Um, they require like a certain nuance, right? They like that you're able to support them as someone who's been in that position. You're able to like hold them accountable because you know what they're capable of, you know, unless they're like injured or something, you know, that's something different. But, you know, with me, like when I work with someone who's doing like powerlifting or maybe they have like an injury, I can speak from personal experience, you know, like one of my niches is, is like shoulders and like lower back pain. Like those are two things right. that due to my own journey that I've been able yeah, to yeah. work through. And a lot of my clients, they'll, you know, they'll be good. They're, they're fine. They'll, they'll reach a point where they're okay. They know what to do. And then they'll come because of the compassion that you show them and you inspire them to keep working towards newer goals to kind of push a little bit further than what they can do on their own. They have the knowledge and they are still inspired by the person that you become. And especially as a coach, we have a really special role where you're yeah. able to provide them with compassion and with like an expertise and whatever, you know, it, it doesn't have to be fitness. It could be in any Avenue. So like for you, what, what are like some things where, you know, I, you know, I've, I've been doing this for a few years and they're, are still things I'm learning. So like, let's say that somebody's thinking about being a trainer or they're, they're brand new to training. What did you learn after that first year that you wish you had known when you first started? Like, is there any like little nugget of like gold information that like you'd be like, Hey, this is really important. You make it, you make a great point. So I, I hate, I say hate it probably a bit strong. Sometimes you get young people coming to the gym for their induction. And you can, you're, you're teaching them about, oh, how many reps you do, rest time, you're like introducing them to techniques. It, you can just tell from the look on their face and their demeanor, they have no interest at all in what you're saying. And no interest at all in, in like learning. I always think, wow, you cocky so-and-so. <laughs> because I'm like, I do this full time and I'm still learning every day. If I don't know at all, then you definitely don't. Yeah, my biggest tip, I guess. So I'm a pretty happy person. I remember I still remember going to work the first day excited, and I, I still enjoy going to work each day. No real problems with actual gym clients, and that's a real big point. I was quite a, a, good, a big tip I'd say. So I, I interviewed for a lot of gyms, and there are three sort of common models here in the UK. Either, so if you're going to go by yourself to start with in personal training, they will give you the clients and pay you a salary. The gym will not pay you anything and you have to do about like 10, 15 hours free work for them. And then you can get as many clients as you want and charge them whatever you want. Or in my case, I, the way my model works at the company I'm at, you, you work as a gym instructor and you teach classes, work on the gym floor, do inductions, which I all enjoy. And that's a salary. And the personal training is essentially your own business, which you do on top sort of thing. So there's a real mixture of varieties in here. So if you're, if you need money and just starting out, go for a salary job and you'll be able to learn from If you're, cause you know, that's a big thing I've learned in the last year too is about sales. 
And I'm not try, not that I'm trying to scamp about at their money. I want to I want them to get their fitness goals, but we live in this world. Where we must monetize our passions and our skills. Yes. Um, <laughs> so if it, yeah, I, I try and work in a salary job because then you can learn a lot from other trainers. Whereas if you if you working in a more like commission based one where you're essentially fighting for clients, you know the, the more experienced trainer will probably get them. So that's a real big one. And then initially, like all trainers, at the start, you'll have to take any client you want. Over time, work out which sort of clients do you like in terms of terms of like demeanor, what goals do they want. So for instance, I like listening to bodybuilders talk, but I don't really do that sort of training. So I can't really relate to it. Whereas with HIIT training, I do do weights regularly at the gym. So you want to try and teach things that you enjoy and you relate with because then you know how the client feels. Absolutely. You know, I think that's so important. You know, I, I know we talked about, we had a little private, like, uh, conversation before this. And yeah, one of the things that warm up. And one of the things that's, like, really important in any industry, you know, I think there's two things that, like, any trainer that's starting off or anybody that is passionate about a certain something two things that you really should understand and get very proficient in learning in your business is one is creating a niche and the other is definitely learning sales and you don't necessarily have to be you know like i I love grant (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Jordan Bell for you know you don't have to be these intense guys or just go after it. If you do, you are more likely to have a higher level of success. But how you do it is just as important as the fact that you need to sell. Right? You're always selling. You're you're always selling everything that you do, whether it's you know going to find a partner, whether it's going to get in the job that you want right for an interview. You know, your craft, like we're doing, even it's, just you're learning how to sell. Even just like your, your first day at school, first at university, first at a job, your personality is being presented to, to the world, essentially. So whether you like it or not, you are selling yourself to uh, an interview is you selling yourself to that employer, isn't it? We, we, we you know, I both like psychology and we know our mentors often tell us it's not what you say, but how you say it. And often why you get picked an interview is not really what what certificates you have or which college you went to, but do, do they like you? Yeah, it's, it's so important. Like a client will, a lot of times, there, there's two situations, you know, based off the niche, you know, that we had talked about. It's like, let's say you specialize in sports or, you, you know, weight loss or maybe men's weight loss, women's, whatever you decide to do that you're passionate about, you know, you're going to do the the best in because you invest your own amount of time into research, learning, being around mentors like that. And I've been very fortunate to be around like a lot of strength coaches and athletes and all kinds of stuff. And what, what I've realized throughout all of that is I, I typically revolve around movement people who are a little bit older, right? You know, like 30 to like 50, mm-hmm. um, a little bit, you know, they're educated, typically are doing well in their own craft. And I, I like to have professional conversations, and I'm very inspired by that. I learn from all kinds of professional. I like to work with professionals that maybe have, are starting out or have like an injury and are just looking to, you know, either lose a little bit of weight. Usually it's like they want to mitigate the pain that they're currently having, and they want to lose a little bit of weight. Like that's the niche that I found the most passion in and that I've been able to move my love for movement and something that's a big need in this world you know especially people being sedentary and that's Mm. where i feel most fulfilled and being able to sell just allows me to keep doing what i'm already doing right like people don't buy the personal trainer they pay for the person who has the skill set yes sense and also the result you're going to get them so with with training athletes or training people rather so there's one woman who i train she enjoyed this session so much with me her husband initially banned my name in their household <laughs> so she was going home after a session it was like oh yeah everyone taught me this he taught me that we did this it was great 
and eventually he was like, his high husband was like, that's enough of this, of this Edmund fellow. But then eventually he was like, right, I'm now going to book some sets with this guy too. So in the end, I got her doing it and then her husband doing it as well. Yeah. And which, 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 is happy, which I, was, I was really happy with. But one, a big thing was those sessions went so quickly. Like I saw us seeing her twice a week, every week. And some of my other colleagues, they were saying towards the end of their sessions with their clients, they were turning up late, they weren't that interested. And I was a bit like, well, is that what you're doing? You're, you're the trainer. You are, you are essentially the ringleader. You are the party bringer. Right? And they're the, they're the audience. You, you bring the vibe. You bring the stimulation. Right? For the mind and the body. And that's why I think it's so important incorporating some HIIT training at the end of sessions or some sort of cardio where it's interval running I really enjoy. To get the heart rate going. Get the sweat pumping um, or body pumping rather and then people leave feeling oh yeah that's a real good workout you know i worked hard i learned something new i had a bit of a laugh with evan as well right and yeah. then they'll come back again a great point you made earlier about building building muscle and strength i always like to think of it we are mammals living on this planet earth i always like to think you, you said about like, tension on the muscles i would like to think imagine that there's a, a snake got a hold of you or snake a hold of your mom or your girlfriend. You know, that, that thing is crushing you. When you're feeling the tension in your, in, your, in, your, in your chest or your weight, whatever you're doing, that, imagine that's a snake that got you. And it will, if you let it, it will crush you and kill you. But if you keep doing those reps, you'll fight it off and you'll be free. Yeah. Yeah, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, but, and, and that's true, though, because that is exactly how evolution works. The evolution, your brain and body will say, dude, we almost died just then. We're now going to respond to that stimulus by putting growth hormone into your body. Turn this crazy wildebeest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, although, speaking of Netflix, are you, are you watching that thing, Tiger King? I have not seen Tiger King. It, I, yeah, I heard it's really entertaining. Hey? Is it good? I, I heard it was really entertaining. I, I enjoyed the first two episodes. Since then, it's just been, like, crazy. But there, there's one point where you see one of the guys the lion gets upset and he like the guy like grabbed the lion's like jaw and turns it down to the ground so a bit like biting i'm like it's a wild animal i know it's i know you guys have trained it but <laughs> it's a sort of what are you doing I, I just i get up and get out sort of thing although that guy was a wealthy businessman so what do you expect from someone who's wealthy and dominant <laughs> and successful, yeah. note to self if no matter how many arm curls you do you can't fight a tiger yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, that's crazy. You know, it's, I don't know, I haven't really been, you know, I, I, I kind of binge at certain points. Like, I, I try to stay productive and everything, you know. Like I try to sneak in my exercise every morning, you know. Like, anybody listening, if you are literally, like, going crazy because of the inactivity or not feeling productive, it's like, the, the easiest thing I found every day is a morning routine and then creating a list. Like, just planning out my day, going through it, call a few people, go to bed, and I'm, I'm good. Like, I've worked out, I've made a to-do list, I feel really productive. Like, my brain's, you know, I, I try to learn, you know, like, and I put this in my other episodes, like, you know, doing, like, Duolingo or something like that. Like, it's really important, like, keep your mind sharp, keep your body sharp, like, do something. Like, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You know, there's there's so many resources out there, and, you know, if you drop down do 10 push-ups, I mean, that's the next day, do 11. You know, it's, I it's, think you already mentioned this. You mentioned about like discipline. I think you already said that. How you, you you wake up and you do your workout and just get it done. Um, one of my favorite American trainers is Brandon Carter, and I I love Brandon and hate him also this for this point. <laughs> so I saw him talking live in Paris. Uh, this is last September now, and he said the time to do something is when you least like feel like doing it. And so there'd be points when I was coming up to do my black belt, I was training so often, I was a bit like, I don't remember doing any more. But I thought, what, what, what would Brandon, Brandon say? He'd say, go and do it. And I did it, and I passed my black belt first time, pretty much no mistakes. A six, hour and a half, six and a half hour grading, by the way, six and a half hours. It was really good fun. Um, stressful, but great fun. Uh, and also now, every gym workout I do, or HIIT workout I do, I have a little rest, maybe a minute, 90 seconds maximum, and I was like, right, I'm doing as many burpees as I can. And often I get to about, about after about 30, and often maybe more on a really good day. And often I'm knackered. I'm like, I absolutely hate 
Brandon Carter. <laughs> but I did the thing I didn't want to do, and because of that, I felt fantastic. Now, it's crazy. We have this, like, you know, I had a conversation with another friend of mine, and one of the people he loves, like, the dude's, like, this, this man is um, is The Rock. You know, every oh, morning. That yes. Yeah, yeah. The, the Rock, like, if you think of this, like, big gargantuan guy who's, like, 40s, almost 50s, like, crazy like just in shape and stuff and every morning every whether he's on set or no matter what he's doing i mean you know he's a millionaire and can travel with his iron paradise whatever but you know it's that same notion that aspect of discipline he works out like every day at like 4 a.m or 5 a.m or yes. whatever his schedule yeah, I read, I read that yeah mark Wahlberg, same thing works out twice a day amazing shape even into his 40s the man cable always killing his workout, killing it in life, you know, and, you know, doing it in the morning is something that, like, I didn't appreciate until I recently started doing that, you know, typically training, you know, we're busy in the mornings, whatnot, and mm. I've had the luxury of being able to cultivate my morning routine, and, you know, it's just really important to start your day off right, you know, like, if anybody's interested, I, I came up with a mnemonic for champ, it's like, I consume, um, my morning cocktail, so that's typically, like, this, I got this from Aubrey Marcus. Um, it was basically pink sea salt and then water, right? You can, like, Brita filters fine, um, or just water in general, right? But pink sea salt has a lot of trace minerals, really good for replenishing electrolytes. Uh, I'll, I do hygiene after, so usually brush my teeth, wash my face. A is um, adjust my attitude, so, like, I'll meditate or yeah. do some breath work. Um, M is for move. That's either a walk, depending on the day, like it's a rest day or something, I'll walk around the block. In Miami, it's beautiful. Or I'll do an yeah. exercise. And then P is plan my day. And I, I've been sticking to that. And every day, like, it's just, just amazing. Like, it, it, how I, it takes, like, an hour to do and maybe an hour and a half if I do, like, an actual workout. But by the time that the hour, hour and a half's done, you know, I, I'm, it's not that I have time, it's I make time. And I just yes, say right. I feel amazing, like my mindfulness practice is done, I'm moving, I'm doing exercise, even a walk, I feel really good. Um, and I noticed that, like, my days are just, just superior productivity compared to the days I don't. If, and it, I, I'm not a morning person, so, like, when I get out, I'm like, yeah, that's fascinating. yeah, but you, you get that buzz on, you get that moving, yeah. uh, as some people call it, a, a, a peak state, as some people call it, you get that boom, and you're like, right, let, let, let's do this, because I've had that with my clients. I, I've said, like, I always make my clients do, normally my clients are do uh, weights probably normally, then core work or warm up, weights, then core work, and then hit the end. A lot of them say, oh, I've got these emails to do, but they think after the workout, like, if I can get through that workout we just did, I can easily do these emails. Yeah, the work should be the hardest part of your day, like in all honesty. Or at least one of them. <laughs> That's a big one about what about like fitness and trying to stick to your journey, the belief it gives you and the confidence it gives you. Like, you know, we all have good and bad days. And that's something I've found from doing sport and gym and any skill in any field. If you can stick in there, listen to what your coaches say and keep practicing, it will get better and better. And the belief you'll get in yourself just goes up and up and up and up. It's, it's awesome. Like, you know, it, it's it just goes to show, like, no matter where we're at in our journeys, whether we're people listening to this, like, and you get a few nuggets, or if you're like trainers like us, and you know, our fitness journey started far before we started training, and it's uh, it's still something that we're constantly working as a craft. It's something that we're integrating in our own lives, and even though we're going to cut things a little, get ready to wrap things up, it's it's something that we can both admire. You know, like seeing how the industry is not only in, UK but like in Miami I'm from Seattle like seeing how the industry is so different is so, so much the same and we all inspired to change and help people and you know it's it's something that we can all take as not only a discipline in our lives but something that we can enjoy and it doesn't have to be you know a B or C it can be something creative and you know hopefully there's a myriad of options that you do enjoy for leisure activities for fun or to train for like a specific goal like it all leads to you empowering yourself 
giving yourself knowledge and yes. just wanting to be a little bit better. So like if you had one last thing that you can have somebody take away with after the interview, like what's something that you think would be extremely both powerful and useful for somebody to implement into the life, whether they're starting or they're a little bit farther in their journey? If you're starting, find something that you enjoy with exercise, it, whether it's, so one, one of my friends who I'm going to interview well does climbing. It's a brilliant workout. It's so, it's so good for the legs and the arms. But the main point is find something that you enjoy. Well, try a bunch of things. And this is a big thing as an adult, which is kind of silly. When you were young, your mum probably would say, oh, go and play tennis. Go and go and try cricket, football. Go to scouts. We call it scouts. Do you have scouts in, in America? Like, yeah, scouts. we have uh... Yeah, we have Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Yeah, cool. So go and try different things. Then often we become an adult and we stop doing those things. We just sort of like drink and watch TV. <laughs> so with, with exercise, find something that you enjoy. Give, give it a chance. Like, you know, with, with my, I keep banging about my karate stuff. But so one year is about 215. Cricket season finished. I thought I'm going to take up a new winter sport. I was at my gym. I saw first, first karate class free. I was like, wow. Well, I'll go, to lose, I'll go and try it. It's really good fun and never left. So go and give things a try. Whether it's like horse racing or polo or squash or, or just going for a hike sort of thing. Tr- try things, give them a chance. Don't just say it was rubbish after one time of doing it. <laughs> like, but th- th- that, that's the key. Does it mentally and physically stimulate you and you get a small bit of that satisfaction from it? Awesome. Uh, um, and what about and something for, inter- uh, for, interme- for intermediates, to be honest, education is the key. S- since I did my personal training course, I've improved by over 30% of my fitness levels and strength levels. I-, I-, I used to be like all of them. I used to go to the gym regularly. I used to go, I used to go running for an hour, four times a week. The- the- I-, I lost weight. I got a bit stronger. But I didn't get the result I wanted. Y- you 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 can try and look on YouTube, you can try and look on the internet, and it gives you all these ideas which are correct, but it's not coming from a holistic point of view. It's this article we're looking at, like bench press. Try, try and get a trainer, because they, they, will, they have all the knowledge you need, and they'll tell you exactly what you need to know. It's like, like I said, you, you, I, I feel very sorry for like, particularly like women who go join a gym, and they go for a triple half an hour, burn off 200 calories, and then after six, eight weeks, I, I have one lady, she said, I run six miles, six miles, four times a week. I'm not losing your weight. I'm like, well, no, you're not, because you're, you're doing the same thing all the time. <laughs> you change it up. There's only, so far, the information you have and your knowledge will take you. And your, and your, sorry, your, your work that will take you. And that's the point. It's not these people aren't trying to get fit. It's just they're not sure what to do. Yeah, that's so true. You know, so like... You know, I think it's important, like, the distinction there, you know, is number one, find something you enjoy if you're starting out. If you're intermediate or maybe a little more advanced, like, getting knowledge, whether it's getting a trainer, finding the right resources, you know, expanding your horizons of what you're currently doing. And that also ties into enjoying it, you know, like, just learning more about whatever you're into, whether you're into bodybuilding, whether you're into powerlifting, whether you're into just movement or just hit style training, you know, maybe getting, you know, into a group fitness class, you know, dancing. Yeah, that's, that's like, a good one, like, like, like Zumba or even if you start doing like ballet or something. My, my mom started doing ballet recently and I was like really pleased. It was like my, my mom's like 70 now and she's always been very active. But I, I was really pleased that she's one, she also has that like friend and things, but she's never really done anything active. So I was like, yeah, you go and do that in the hope as she gets older, that'll keep like her body and bones strong sort of thing and it's something that, that's something that she'll enjoy um awesome. yeah, and try and be and try and be like open-minded about it don't be like that's rubbish that's good <laughs> you want to give something a try like there's a, there's a that brilliant book mindset which is about a growth as a fixed mindset try not to be like this is me sort of thing you know give out other things, things a try and then you, yeah go and give things like a six month try or at least a month and then you can say yeah it's not for me but <laughs> that's key right there. Give it a try. Give it an honest try. You know. So I, like, I, lo- I love how we were discussing before. Should we talk for fifty minutes, half an hour? It's not going to double that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just the, pa- this the passion is, uh, for fitness. Just, guys, 
Yeah, we, you know, we, once you start talking about something you really like, it's, you know, yeah. you get in it. And, you know, for people that want to keep in contact or to give you follow or like watch your YouTube, like, what are your media platforms? I'm going to attach them in the episode, but where can they get, where can they reach out to you? Cool. So you can, I have two Instagram accounts. I have one fitness one, which is called uh, Edge's Fitness Secrets. If you type in that or type in my name, Edmund Edge, my other personal will come up too. I'm also on Facebook and if you're on YouTube, if you search Edmund Edge, Edge's Fitness Secrets. Again, I've got content on there. And yeah, reach out to me, please. I, I love training people. It's really good fun. And yeah, let me know. Perfect. All right, guys, so we're going to call it a wraps on that. But if y'all are interested in connecting with Edmund, um, who were he uh, just spoke with, and I will go ahead and I'll attach that on there. And hopefully you guys got some. Hopefully you guys were entertained as much as we were during throughout <laughs> yeah. the episode. Really try to spice it up with um, a British accent this, team, this time. Um, <laughs> we had a lot of fun, and that's all we have for you guys today. Yeah. Best of luck, guys. See you next time. Awesome. Me. Cheers, Matt.